So Argentina have just pulled off a massive upset in the rugby championship, beating New Zealand 38 points to 30. It was a phenomenal performance from Los Pumas. The All Blacks, they will look at next week. They will have to regroup and they will have to make a lot of changes because this Argentine side, certainly a threat in this rugby championship. And in this review, we'll be looking through at some match stats, key players, and also who maybe didn't quite perform the way that they would have liked to throughout this match. But just first off, what a game of rugby. Both sides having their moments, a back and forth game. Argentina, that counter-attack, anytime New Zealand made a mistake, they were extremely clinical. And that try on Mateo Carreras when he stepped around McKenzie was definitely a turning point throughout this game for Los Pumas. But looking through at who was able to score the tries for these two teams, Sam Derry was able to score himself one. Leonard Brown got himself another. And then Mark Talia, the third try scorer for the New Zealanders. For Argentina, they had the try of Molina. They had the try of Lucio Sinti. And they had the try of Carreras. But overall, like I said, Argentina, they played like a side that had a game plan, that had determination and a feeling that they were going to win this game. Of course, Wellington, we have seen what they've been able to do in the past when playing New Zealand at this ground. And I believe that that bad record for New Zealand in Wellington might be a thing that continues in the future. But looking through at some of the stats, Argentina had 100 extra running metres than New Zealand, 395 compared to 295 of the All Blacks, 21 defenders beaten for New Zealand compared to 15 for Argentina. New Zealand having 11 offloads compared to two of Los Pumas, whereas it was actually New Zealand's backline, including the offloads, that wasn't really able to pierce their Argentine defence. It was formidable, it was strong. They made 157 tackles throughout that game, and they just didn't want to budge, which I think is a massive credit to not just the discipline, but also to the mentality of this Argentine side. Now, they did give away quite a few penalties in this game overall, 13 to be exact. New Zealand giving away 12, so 25 between these two sides. The discipline, I think it's going to be something that both sides want to improve on as we get further throughout the rugby championship. Of course, we'll be meeting each other next week for their very next contest. But key players for New Zealand, someone who I thought did extremely well was Anton Leonard brown I don't know why they took him off for Rico Ioane, I felt like maybe Jordy Barrett should have been the man that made his way from the field, put Ioane on and move Anton Leonard Brown to 12. It's not what they ended up doing. Instead, having Ioane out there alongside Jordy Barrett. Another player who I thought did very well for New Zealand was actually Sam Derry, the youngster in that locking duo, scored himself the try. And overall lineouts, with the exception of later on in the game, they were going pretty decently for the New Zealanders. Then also Bowden Barrett at 15. I felt like he once again had a very solid game, possibly confirming himself as that number 15 for the All Blacks in the future. But for Argentina, there is a list of players who did extremely well in this game. We saw quite a bit of Juan Matan Gonzalez. We saw Gonzalo Bertrano and Santiago Carreras both have their own moments. And like I said, Carreras' kicking was something that definitely helped them in the right direction for this game. Argentina, Mateo Carreras, that step, like I said, was absolutely phenomenal when he scored the try in the first half. And then I also thought Juan Cruz Malia added quite a bit of stability throughout the 80 minutes, getting everything right at the back, which is exactly what the Argentines needed. But the players who didn't perform, there is quite a list for New Zealand, which makes the head scratching begin for Scott Robinson in terms of what they got wrong with the selection. I think that Ethan Black get he had a very 50-50 game. He had some good moments, but he had a lot of poor ones throughout the 80 minutes. TJ Piranara, the game seemed to change when Cortes Ratama made his way onto the field. But when TJ was out there, it just seemed a little bit laboured for New Zealand. And then I also think that Geordie Barrett, you know, on another day, perhaps could have had a bit of performance for Argentina. Overall, I don't think there were too many players who didn't really step up. When we look through at the benches, like Argentina's scrum seemed to get stronger as the match progressed. That's only because we didn't get to see a scrum for the first 60 minutes. But when we did, Argentina showed great domination in that. Another concern that New Zealand will have to look at as they move forward. But the next week's game, it is going to be New Zealand versus Argentina. They will be playing at 7.05pm New Zealand time. We will be covering that one on the channel as well. 
But if you are new, of course, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and let me know what you thought of this game in the comments. I feel like I've talked very fast throughout this review. I'm still in slightly commentary mode from the stream. But hopefully, we do get to see Argentina continue being strong as we make our way through the rugby championship and a little bit of redemption for the All Blacks as well. But thank you all very much for tuning in and I will see you all for the next one.